my fire. The one desire. Believe when I say that I want it that way. Tell me why it ain't, ain't nothing, nothing but, but a heartache. Tell me why it ain't nothing but a mistake. Tell me why I never, never want to hear you say, I want it that way. Oh shit, we actually did it. And mostly in sync. Holy shit, we did it, folks. We did it. Do you believe in miracles, ladies and gentlemen? We did that with one take and no rehearsals. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> How are you doing tonight, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Channel Chasers. For real, though, that was a feat within itself. We did not practice that whatsoever. <laughs> and we were in sync the entire time. Pun intended, despite the fact that's the wrong boy band. Um, <laughs> Holy crap, I didn't expect that to actually work. <laughs> um, but yeah, as always, I am your host, Jay from Mr. Jay's Reviews, and joining me, as always, uh, my backup vocals, my friend, my co-host, Brian Percy. How you doing tonight, Brian? Hello, peoples. Um, I'm all right. Yeah, so unfortunately, guys, our last episode on In the Dark Season 1. Uh, the audio didn't process pop properly, and uh, the audio itself is just lost. So uh, this is episode 16, technically, even though it's not. Uh, that That's unfortunate, because that was a really good episode. We had a pretty awesome discussion. But long story short, go watch In the Dark. Season 2 just started. Uh, season 1 is on Netflix right now. Y'all got nothing but time if you don't work in the healthcare industry and aren't an essential worker. So go sit down, watch it, you'll enjoy it, trust us, and then maybe when season two wraps, we'll do a season two episode and we can kind of do a lightning round version of our discussion of season one. Uh, but yeah, this week we're uh, moving on to something lighter, something fluffier, something Brian actually suggested because uh, we were out of shows to cover like literally out of shows our only option was one show that had come out like this past thursday and so we were like we can't really marathon a show in three days well yeah. i can't yeah they probably could yeah brian 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 has a whole job in school work so it, it, it'd be real tough for him so we were like okay what are we gonna do and then Brian looked this up, and it looked yeah, it seemed pretty fun to him. Like the cast seemed interesting, and on the U.S. trend list on Netflix. So you know, we were we were very curious. Neither of us are like massive wrestling fans, so we didn't have that bit of nostalgia to it. Uh, but you know, still enjoyed it a lot. We are talking about the Big Show show. Hmm. I mean. I I somewhat followed professional wrestling, but that was back in, like, the time of the Ultimate Warrior and Hulk yeah, Hogan. I, yeah, I was going to say, I followed professional wrestling toward uh, when I was younger in, like, the Attitude era, era with The Big Show, The Undertaker, uh, Stone Cold, The Rock, uh, you know, those guys. Um, I, I even knew who Rafiki was, but... Yeah, like, uh, you know, so we're not hardcore wrestling fans, but we are somewhat knowledgeable. And, you know, I recognize the big show. So I was like, OK, I'll, I'll definitely check this out. Um, and much to my surprise, I ended up really liking it. Um, and I think, mm. on, honestly, I under, like, Brian, you know, me and Brian were talking like via text. And, uh, you know, I think Brian said it best. I think this was I understand why this show is so popular right now, because with all the craziness that's going on on the, in, on the outside, uh, you know, some light fluff, feel good, comfort food, TV, very needed. Yeah, this felt kind of like um, 
I don't want to say old school because it hasn't been that long, but like the no, early two thousand. So, Disney. so Brian, I hate to make you feel old, but like that era of Disney Channel is over a decade old, so it is old school. Well, yeah, the like early two thousands Disney family sitcoms, like, yeah, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. It definitely has that vibe, and Netflix is definitely getting into that bag. They have uh, Alexa and Katie, <laughs> which is a show that I really enjoy. Um, that was actually uh, co-created by one of the creators of the uh, one of the showrunners of the One Day at a Time reboot. Uh, that's a really fun show. Um, that's also very much like a Disney Channel comedy, but on Netflix. Um, and this has a, like a very similar vibe. Uh, it, it's you know the basic premise is the big show's oldest daughter. Um, her mom got a job overseas, and so she's taking this opportunity to finally move in with her dad and stepmom and uh, sisters to finally get to know them and get closer to them. Uh, Especially because her dad just recently retired. Yep. From uh, professional wrestling. Um, yep. So, so uh, and so she moved to Tampa and you know just starts to start a new life here. Um, it's. You know, it's a very simple show. Uh, you know, this obviously isn't going to be like one of our long, in-depth discussions where we didn't, like talk about like really intricate character development, character philosophies, such and such. This is very light and fluffy, so this is probably going to be super quick. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, there is a reason we opened up with "I Want It That Way," and we'll get to that later. Um, yeah, but also this this is only like they do with their some some of their sitcoms. This was part one yeah so and so literally we're only going to be talking about uh, eight episodes of a 16 episode season so yeah this is going to be super quick uh and each episode was only like 20 something minutes so yeah because netflix doesn't have commercials um so yeah um i guess we could just go character by character and kind of like just talk about like how our like reactions to them so let's start, so, with, the side, let's start with the side characters uh, should we do spoiler alert or not or what? I mean, it's the big show show, so there, I, I, I doubt that people are like really gonna be hurt. Uh, but you know, just better safe than sorry. Yeah, this is where we're gonna go into spoilers. Uh, if you really care about spoiling the big show show, <laughs> um, true, but yeah, so we'll start with the side characters. Um, probably my favorite side character is uh, Jaleel White's character, Terry. The uh, the owner of the gym that uh, Big Show works at and Big Show's best friend character, uh, he is hilarious. Mm-hmm. He channels kind of like this weird, like m- sketchy mix of both Steve and Stefan because he has kind of a cool but sketchy vibe, but he also has that weird tinkering inventor side, which is very Steve. Um, so, uh, and, and, yeah, and he's not as like suave as Stefan. Mm-hmm. And he gets, he still gets into a lot of the same like classic, like slapstick comedy. That's what a lot of his bits are, which, you know, I still find pretty hilarious. Um, Especially because um, when you see him compared to the big show. I mean, that's a lot of the jokes in this show, which, you know, you would expect because the big show is as close to what the Incredible Hulk would look like in real life. If, uh, if, uh, <laughs> He was I believe person. he, I believe he is legit seven feet tall. Yeah, he's like I think he's at like he's more than seven feet. I think he's like seven two something like that. No, like not like super super tall, but he's like seven two. Like he's he's, he's in the upper echelon of tall. Like, well, that and he's he's very muscular because um, especially if you know him from back in the day, he definitely lost weight and gained muscle. So yeah, he's that's... honestly scarier than he was back then. Yeah, he's much more lean, and, like, you know, he, he's literally, like, a walking, he's a walking muscle. I mean, that, and that's a, a lot of the other jokes here, because, you know, obviously, he's, like, freakishly strong, so a lot of it is, like, him accidentally breaking shit, and, like, you know, him threatening to hurt people. Um, but, but I also like that, where he's like, I'll pay you, or I'll Amazon Prime that for you. Yeah, so so he's not just a dick about it. Uh, but yeah, so that that's Terry. Terry is like you know his aspiring adventure best friend who we owns don't get the too gym. much of Terry. Um, to the fact where he's not a main cast member, he's a reoccurring cast member. Mm-hmm. There will be episodes where we don't see Terry, but um, 
Definitely the finale is where we get to see a lot of Terry. Yeah, and uh, uh, he had a, uh, he had a lot of fun and a lot of, a lot of moments where he acting gets to shine. as Joe's manager. Yeah, where he gets to he gets to shine a lot there. He he really he really like you know takes the spotlight very well. Um, I really enjoy uh, Terry's character and a lot of his one liners are great. Um, so yeah, that's Terry. So now let's talk about another side character that was a, a big part of one of the kids' subplots, Taylor Swift. Not that Taylor Swift. No. Um, I love this kid. I mean, he was a jerk in the end, but I love this kid because his name is Taylor Swift, and so he uses that markability, marketability, to sell himself uh, to get this election as. Um, lower school president, and he uses Taylor Swift song titles as his campaign slogans. That is genius. Right, we gotta my, shake it off. There right will my, be no bad blood here. Write my name in that blank space when you go to vote. Like, oh, come on. Come on, man. And then he he really got me, even though I felt really bad for um the, the daughter. Forget I forget what the middle kid's name is. Um, what is the middle girl's name? I know it's Lola, and then there's JJ. I don't remember the middle girl. Madison. Name. Was it Matt? It was. It's just I. I don't know. I don't remember honestly. I like, will Google. Yeah, I was gonna say look it up while I stall. Uh, but yeah. So um, it's 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 uh, even when like she got broken up with in public, I had to clap when he said, "And we are never ever getting back together." I was like, okay. I don't like you right now, Taylor Swift, but I respect you. I respect you. I knew you were trouble when you walked in, but it's cool. Maddie. Maddie. Okay, it is Maddie. Okay, yeah. But, yeah, you know, T- Taylor was a fun character. Um, Like I said, I knew he was trouble when he walked in, but it's all right. Uh, Well, I'm sure she'll shake it off. I know he used that one, but still. Um. But yeah, no, he was he was pretty fun. Um, one character that I hated all throughout, and I I just don't like when media tries to do this um, angle of, for characters, especially when they're young. It it just feels super cringy, and like, oh look at us, we're with the times. We know how the internet works. Uh, the one character, Monica Biggie, who is the gossip influencer, who is like Kid Keemstar, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, she's like a f- kid female version of Keemstar instigating drama between these middle schoolers. Like, But she only does live streams for some reason. Yeah, because apparently, like, you know, uh, whoever whoever was on the writing staff only really knew about IG Live, I guess. Um, but... I don't know, man. I always, I always hate. I mean, especially because you know, like th- this is the, like the field I'm in, quote unquote. Like, I, I hate whenever media portrays like online personalities like this stupid stereotype, and like we're not actual people. <laughs> but I do, I did like um, her Muppet scene. Oh yeah. Um, or Maddie I, I... finally went off on her. I especially like when she's like, why do you insist on being called Monica B? You are literally the only Monica in our school. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, no, that, that was pretty great. Um, so, yeah, I feel, are there any more side characters? Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess we should bring up Asshole Bennett. Like, he's the only other, like, relevant side character, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I, I really don't like him. I mean, I guess that's the point. Like, he's that, like, annoying kiss-ass character um, that is just always just trying to sneak around. He's like Starscream, if Starscream was a person and not a cartoon robot. Yeah, kind of. Like, you know, if, you, if, if, you, if you're in power, he's going to kiss your ass and snivel to you. But the second that like, he doesn't find you useful, he will betray you in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. Start- He's Starscream if Starscream was a person. I'm and he's sure. always working an angle. Exactly. Nobody likes him. And, you know, he, he doesn't deserve to be liked. <laughs> but uh, but uh, there are two other 
characters that I feel like should have mentioned. Side characters. Okay, okay cool. Go ahead. Uh, one, the coach. Oh, he was pretty hilarious. I, I uh, you know, I, I liked his opening bit with like the whole hockey team. You know, that was never really expanded upon. Like she, she got in, and then like we never saw it again. I'm sure we're gonna see it in the next half, but like that was never really expanded upon. And um, then he turned out to be also the driving coach. Yeah, and then like he used he used Lola to tail his uh tail his ex wife's uh tail, well not, is now his ex wife um his wife's uh, ex-husband, um, and, like, he was spiraling out of control. He just became a sad boy. And uh, then he even used that as a way to fail her. Yeah, like, talking on a cell phone while driving, that's a big no-no. I was just like, oh, dang, that sucks, man. Um, Indeed, but he, he was, was pretty, he, he was, was a funny, funny. side yeah. character. And another one that I just want to quickly add note to is uh, Kennedy. Which one is Kennedy? M- Maddie's dumb friend. Oh, the, the dumb friend, right. The one that she, she always assigns to do the glitter <laughs> because that's the only thing that she could do. Yeah, and the, and I like it where the friend doesn't want her to see something that Taylor posted, so she tells Kennedy to get rid of the phone, and Kennedy throws her phone out the window. <laughs> No, my my, fa- no, my favorite thing with Kennedy, my favorite joke with Kennedy was when like they have to, they have to pay like the the guy who gets who gets the dirt on Taylor, and he only accepts gift cards. And she gives she tries to give like a whole ass Amex black card, and they're like Kennedy, this is this is a credit card. This is an Amex black card. You can't. He accepts gift cards. He goes, it's a card that buys you gifts. <laughs> She was such a small character, but she made such an impression. <laughs> she has, she has a lot of them. Like she has a lot of the funniest one-off jokes. I, I definitely agree with you there. Um, I, I hope, I hope we get to see more of her. I mean, I, I have a soft, I have a soft spot for idiots when they're used in uh, moderation. Indeed, but I guess now um, we'll talk about the main family themselves. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's let's start by talking. Let's start by talking about uh, Lola, since you know she's kind of the catalyst of the show. Um, I really like her. She has a very fun personality. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I I was really like thinking, oh, they're gonna start her off as a brat, and then she's gonna slowly grow. No, she turns. She starts off really nice, and she actually likes her siblings. I am so happy. That the old '90s, early 2000s trend of siblings always fighting is gone now because you know I I have I have multiple siblings I have like a lot of cousins you know we roast each other all the time but we we never like fought fought like that and that always annoyed me like siblings don't always fight y'all no they um, don't and um I, I I like that they have a very positive relationship. Um, especially the relationship between Lola and JJ is super cute. Uh, really enjoy that. Um, you know, Lola, she inherits a lot of the qualities from her dad. She's super competitive. Uh, you know, she's strong-willed. She's very willful. Um, she's, you know, tomboyish. Um, but uh, she's also her own character. She, um, you know, she, uh, obviously misses home. Uh, but, you know, she really does like it in Florida. Um, because anything goes in Florida. Yeah. Um, um. And you can clearly see the elements of her father in her. Yep. Which I, I love that where uh where they like go to the, like their first competition thing and it's like handle this like for the cook off. Yep. And handle this the old vet, and he's like handle this the old fashioned way. And he says cook off, but she says in the ring. Yeah. And it's just like the gumption of that girl, teenage right. girl. And she, she's like, oh, okay, cook off. But, you know, I got you next time, old man. Like, I'm just like, all right, good for you. And then, um, and then the time where he wanted to show that she could be good in the ring. So she gets, he gets her to check him. But then he yeah. actually ends up hurt. Yeah, I thought that was pretty hilarious. Uh, her her dynamic with her dad is really fun. 
I also like her friendship with her friendship and relationship with Cassie. It's very unique because you know they they go the stereotypical route of the step parent trying to be the friend at first, but then it, it takes an interesting swerve, and it's not a big swerve, but it's a nice enough swerve where Lola's like, "Well, my mom had me when she was young, so like she kind of already started, she kind of already treated me like a friend, and you know I have that, like that's my thing with her." Um, you know, what I've always really wanted was, you know, an actual mom. And, you know, you are the disciplinarian in the house. You're the Punisher, which I love that gag. Mm-hmm. Um, um, we'll talk about that when we get to Cassie. But that's one of my favorite, that's one of my favorite recurring gags. Um, but, yeah, she's like, I, I, I want you to be like that. I want you to be my mom. And she's like, oh, okay, cool. I can do that. I thought that was really sweet. That little arc was nice. Yeah, and I also like the swerve of the whole... Um them wanting to give her her own room, but she she's totally fine with sharing it. Mm-hmm. Which you know, as, as someone who as someone who shared a room for a few years, like you know, I like. Let me tell you, the catharsis of having your own room is nice, but sometimes you do miss having someone else around. Which uh, something that they never really go into about this is. The fact that all throughout the show, even though JJ is living on her, in her own room by herself, she still has bunk beds. Oh yeah, no. Well, I, so funny story relating to that to like that to my own life. Like for for a long time, uh, like w- once uh, once my once my brother finally like stopped being a baby and uh, like start uh, like started going into his own room. We used to have bunk beds in my room like for a while, and then eventually. When he moved into his own room, we broke down the bunk beds and finally got individual beds. That was, let me tell you, man. Freedom. Freedom. Good times. Um, but yeah, like, uh, I, I, I thought that was fun. And I, I, I like the also just the inter, um, like the interpersonal dynamics between all the siblings, too. Um, like, uh, like, you know, in regards to Lola, I think, you know, Lola is definitely the one that both of them look up to, but, like, in different ways. I think, like, definitely uh, JJ idolizes her in a way because, like, again, she has, like, some of the best parts of their dad, like, in her. And then, you know, um, whatchamacallit, uh, Maddie uh, idolizes Lola because Lola is very confident and very, like, you know, assertive. Where she is very like kind of like even though she has leadership skills, she's also like a very timid, shy person, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, like Lola helps to bring that um, bring out the more confident side to her. Like when she throws a party for her for like for campaign purposes, yeah, like, I thought that was great. Um, and like you know, uh, JJ being the DJ. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, they were, and, and because they were on Netflix, they're able to do some very adult jokes, like JJ comparing her candy addiction to drugs, yeah, like several times. And then, and then him saying at the end, uh, daiquiris, virgin yeah. daiquiris, and she's like, "No, I think I just need black coffee. I need to start yeah. being me again. I need to start being me again. I need to go straight." I'm, I'm I'm cutting off, but but yeah. Also, one other thing about Lola and the dynamics is mm-hmm. in even though they already only have eight episodes, they already did their kind of "It's a Wonderful Life" type episode. Yeah, mm-hmm. and this one was "If He Never Retired," and I like how they showed that Lola was still back in. Minnesota, Minnesota, and that um, Matt and Maddie was working for Taylor Swift. This mm-hmm. shows Taylor Swift. Um, which side note? I love that the dad kept reacting like Tay Tay. <laughs> that was my favorite. <laughs> that was my favorite. I was like, look. This show had a lot of great running gags, and that was one of my favorites. She, and I love that he's like, I'd kill to be in her squad, and he goes. And it's just like, wow, the big but, show is a big Taylor Swift thing. Yeah, but I love the fact that in this, um, they made it clear that the reason why, the reason why Maddie, like, had the confidence and all was not because of 
the big the show. The big show. It was because Lola wasn't there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed that. Um, all right. So now we're going to move from Lola to Maddie. Um, and then after Maddie, we're going to do my favorite, favorite of the kiddos. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, Maddie. So I like her arc. Again, very simple. It's just her kind of developing her confidence and her assertiveness. But I really like the payoff at the end where she's like, oh, I'm not going to, I'm not just going to let you like, you know, push me around and I'm not going to just say yes to all your ideas. Your idea is stupid. Um, it goes against what I believe in. And I'm not going to let that happen. I'm, I'm going to fight for the rights of all these kids. Because uh, that's what a person. And I'm like, good for you. All right. Mm-hmm. I, it was an and, yeah, and I like the twists and turns that they made with her. Like, uh, guys, I'm in love with Taylor Swift. Right. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I that was a nice to- uh, that was a nice touch. Really enjoyed that. Um, I liked them having to keep it secret. Uh, that was pretty funny, and and the whole party situation was hilarious as well. Um. Like, uh, I love that Lola busts in. She goes, guys, you know, we have a situation. She goes, what? Is there, like, a riot? Is there, like, a is there like a fight or something going on? She goes, oh, I wish. That would have at least been fun. There's, like, a giant nerd debate going on about straws downstairs. It's really harsh in the party vibe. Yeah, the the famous straw debate. Yep. Metal versus paper. Yep. And uh, so, like, th- that was pretty fun. Um. You know, uh, I I thought that Maddie was gonna be super annoying because like they mm-hmm. make they make her the stereotypical like you know super feministy like idolizes uh, she has a Ruth Bader Ginsburg poster in her room and like famous women in history training cards so I thought she was gonna be like super annoying hashtag feminism type. Well, no, she was genuinely a good character and pretty funny. And one of the things that, and one of the things that helped, like, make her unique and like all that is, of course, she has her idols, but her three main idols are Ruth Bader Ginsburg, um, Alexandra, yeah, oh, uh, AOC, Alexandra Ocasio Cortez, um, and the third is Leslie Nope. Yep. From Parts and Rec. Which I think I thought was hilarious. I, I was really hoping that they'd get Amy on here. Because, like, you know, Amy, 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 I'm sure has some Netflix pool. Um, but, you know, maybe, maybe maybe next time. I'm sure I'm sure JJ can tweet out from Big Show's account and get fucking, get, get fucking Amy Poehler to show up. JJ can do it. Which, by the way, I was so shocked when that happened. Right when they actually got uh, yeah, we, what's his face? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that. But also, I love that the joke with uh, back to Maddie. I love the joke when the uh, JJ brings it up. She goes, "Did you really think Hillary Clinton just randomly calls you on your birthday?" <laughs> and she's like, "Is my entire world a lie?" <laughs> <laughs> yep. I, I love that. I thought that was hilarious. All right, so yeah, I, I feel like that's it for Maddie. I, I really liked her development. Um, yeah, she's a really fun character. Now let's talk about my favorite character of the entire show. Indy, Jennifer Jane, JJ White, or JJ Show, the little show. She is great. Oh my goodness, she's a little evil genius. She's like, mm-hmm. she reminds me of like. A, a smart, uh, like a, a more devious, sneaky version of like Chloe from Dog with a Blog. If you guys ever watched that show, uh, yeah, uh, she also kind of reminded me of uh, Parker from Live and Maddie. I could also see that. Like, it's a it's a nice combo uh, because he's got he's got that genius vibe too. But yeah, no, I I really really liked her. She always she always just was playing everybody and like the constant thing. Was like gotta keep an eye on JJ. JJ is too smart for her own damn good. Like she's good. Like she she uh, she goes to she dresses as Gru for Halloween multiple years in a row. And favorite part because they keep talking about how she, like her her career aspirations is to become a super villain. 
and then she's got like the Steve Jobs turtleneck on, and she has a, like a play date arranged with the rest of the smart kids from her smart kids class. And she's like, right, "Hey, mom, could you get can you get us some, some snacks? You know, chips, grapes. Oh, what do you guys want? Bananas." And then they're like, <laughs> "Oh no!" And then the, they're like, "Oh no, turtleneck, scarf, bananas, <laughs> the scarf." Oh my god, she has minions. Look at them, they're all in yellow. Oh my god, no. This is my worst fear come true. Oh, I love that. <laughs> and also, like, she she's like abusing the smart kids to like get get them to do advanced hacks. They're uh, like, they have plans, they have floor plans at the candy factory so they can break into it. Like, mm-hmm. while, while on their play date, that's their whole thing. They're planning a candy factory heist. Like, and and she, like, goes to the tech kid, and she's like, can you do this for me? And he's like, give me a juice box in a couple hours. Uh, I can like, I, I can do pretty much anything. And then, like, again, that that, that, that joke pays off, because she has, a, like, a crap ton of candy at the party. And they're like, where'd you get that? And she's like, don't worry about it. <laughs> True. Wow. But... And then you got the one girl who, um, the teacher even says that she... She's taking the floor in a bar exam. So, if you ever need, if you ever need help with homework. Yep. I, I thought, I thought that was pretty great. Um, uh, I, I liked her arc of, like, accepting herself fully, you know, like, embracing her genius, uh, not, not being afraid to, like, be more challenged. I thought that was nice, um, uh, uh and she's just so fun. Like again, like all like all the shit where she's like messing with the Big Show's Twitter account. She gets fucking Tam from Queer Eye to show up. Which, by the way, like you know, not to be picky, Tam is my least favorite member of the Queer Eye crew. If we wanted to get somebody fun, we should have got Jonathan. Just saying, uh, but I, I get it. Well, um, Tam was Tam. Tam was the mom's favorite, so I get it. Isn't he also the fashion Tam one? Tam is the fashion one, and I know that like their specific problem was fashion related, but Jonathan is just more fun. I feel like Jonathan would have been a much more fun addition here. But that's just my personal queer eye bias. I'm I'm always gonna be a, a big fan of Jonathan and Karamo. Um, I just, I also I also think Anthony is highly underrated. Like you know everybody like. Nobody, nobody shows love to Anthony, and Anthony's job is super important. Um, but that's a queer eye discussion. We, we're not talking about queer eye. Uh, but yeah, that that was really fun. We just get to see how like how good JJ is at manipulating things. She is just one. Uh, she is just one of the best characters. And, and I love it where like just every once in a while it's like JJ, what are you doing? And then it's like so 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 so, and she's just like plotting. Yep. And, and and she and she's and I I love when like they turn off the Wi Fi to like to stop the girls from fighting and JJ JJ walks and she goes what the heck happened to the Wi Fi I was hacking into uh, my essay about the importance of sleep <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's all about the it, was... it's all about the REM cycle ladies and gentlemen <laughs> yeah oh. that was that was good and also just. About uh, tricking Kim and all that. It's like Lola's going to her siblings and she's like, what are you doing? It, and it's like, we're, we're, we're catfishing. <laughs> we're, we're catfishing a celebrity to help mom. It's like, oh, all right. I will unpack that later. I've got my own thing to deal with. <laughs> but. Yeah, and she even has like a whole elaborate plan to hide the dog, um, like because like she thinks like their dad's allergic and all this stuff. So I'm like, that was pretty fun. Um, and but then also to show her character and all that, when Bennett starts blackmailing them and all that, she says that she has a plan to deal with Bennett, and it's smart but also humbling what her plan is yeah she lo- and her plan is to just reveal is it just to come yeah, clean she just reveals it she's just like now you don't have anything to hold over us asshole like that mom knows you were blackmailing children 
We're like, how you feeling? Um, but uh, yeah, I I thought that was great. She's just great overall. She's my favorite character from the show. Mm-hmm. I, I definitely think, uh, and she is the constant victim of the Punisher, which leads us into Cassie's character. I really like Cassie. She's she's more than just your stereotypical mom. She reminded me a lot of the mom from Good Luck Charlie. She has a lot of that like a lot of that sass and that pluck. Um Indeed, which which is funny though, because um the mom is that the mom is actually the most seasoned out of all the actors minus say maybe Julia White. Oh yeah, what has she been in? Uh she was she was uh, in that '70s show. She was Fez's crazy girlfriend. Oh shit! Uh, she was in that um, Amanda Bynes um, brief sitcom, "What I Like About You." Wasn't that? I thought that was a movie. Was that a sitcom? I thought that was a movie. It was a sitcom, and also one, surprisingly enough, one of the cast members for that show. Uh. Your favorite legend. Mick? He really? said sarcastically. Oh, Nate. Oh, he said sarcastically. Yes, definitely Nate. And uh, she was also on that Disney show, Nikki, Ricky, Dicky, and Dawn. Was that Disney? I'm pretty sure. Was that, I think that was Nick. I think that was Nick. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's Nick. Yeah, it was Nick. My bad. It's all good. But um, the biggest thing that she's known for, though, is she was Lauren on One Tree Hill. No shit. Oh, wow. I feel dumb. I remember you telling me this before, too. I was like, why does she look so familiar? That that makes so much more sense. And she's been on a plethora of different sitcoms and stuff. But yeah, she's she's really funny. Um, I like that they don't overdo the size different jokes, but when they do them, they're really funny. Like the one where she like uses the literally uses a step ladder to kiss him. I thought that was hilarious. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like all the jokes about like the the massive crater that he leaves in bed when he gets up to make his snacks. Yeah, which to be fair, they only did that in one episode, and they only did it, like two three times. Yeah. Again, they like they like you. You know the stereotypical jokes that'll come from this scenario, but they don't overplay them. They know when to use them, and I, I really appreciate that. Yeah, and they do subtle things too. Like anytime they have like a family moment, sometimes and they're all together, he just like legit picks her up and puts her on. His lap. Mm-hmm. And I like that they're. Um, I like I said, I also like that there's like payoffs to these like running gags, like Chloe with the candy. I said Chloe. Uh, JJ with the candy, um, you know, different things like that. Like Lola and her interactions with the coach because the coach kind of hates them because like somehow their family ends up getting him injured or hurt somehow. So like Mm -hmm. he has a vendetta against the white family. And then also the, the running gag with the Punisher leads up to Leads up to Paul thinking that he can be the Punisher. And he tries. And he's like, hey, look, they're not talking. And then she takes the girl's iPad and it's like, I hate you. You're being a jerk. (laughs) Um, uh, uh, Shut up, you're a real dragon emoji. And then then, then you see Maddie just toss all of uh, poor Lola's clothes out the window. It's just like, oh, uh, uh, well, now they're fighting. Okay, my bad. <laughs> yep, and she's like, if Punisher has to step up. I, I just, I just wish, I just, I like, I like the hat. You, you know, I'm a hat guy. I just wish she had the t-shirt. If mm-hmm. she had the t-shirt, it would compl- it would complete it. And they're on Netflix. I know technically. It's canceled and like it's no longer a uh, it won't longer be a Netflix property, you know, in a couple of years. But like it's still there. Like we can do it. I, I still, th- but I still think it would be funny. Like if they do a Halloween episode and she does not dress up as the Punisher, I'm gonna be upset. 
But also, uh, in the same vein, though, I like how she was like, don't mess with the hat. I paid like 40 bucks on it on Etsy and had to wait a whole month. I mean, yeah, if, if, you, if you ever had anything custom made on Etsy, you know that struggle. Uh, I, I really did appreciate that one. Um, uh, but, um, yeah, she, she's really fun. I, I like the little tattoo arc like we were talking about with Lola. And, like, you know, her figuring out the boundaries um, as a step-parent. And, again, I like uh-huh. that they avoided the stupid cliche of, the, like, the step-parent being an ass to their kid or the kid being an ass to the step-parent. Mm-hmm. And they also did something that um, not that many shows uh, do, actually. And that's uh, make her a character beyond just being the wife and mother. Yeah, and also, I, I really like that they, like, they don't make a big deal about the fact that because Lola is her stepdaughter, she doesn't call her mom, she calls her Cassie. And like, and it's not a, a disrespectful thing, it's just a, you know, my mom is mom, so I'm not going to call you mom. But yeah, I still but... respect you in that same way. Yeah. And I like her story arc with the whole, uh, with the whole like real estate agent thing. Yeah. And like her her eventually like getting her own business and like making her own commercials. It kind of reminded me a little bit of like a like a fluffier version of Catherine's arc in a million little things. Yeah, kind of. But but yeah, I like I like how um when she does work at the farm though. Uh JJ comes in and JJ like knows everybody. Yep. She's like, "Hey, Aaron, you still rocking this? You rocking? You really rocking the skinny jeans, my friend?" And she goes, "You went to one company picnic and you somehow know everyone." She goes, "Some people just want to be seen, mom." And then and then she's like, JJ's like, "Well, you could use me," and the mom's like. Why do you think I brought you here? If, if, if we didn't have yeah. a sinkhole day, I would have called you out. I would have, I would have snuck you out of school. I like where your head's at, lady. <laughs> and then, like the moral, the moral for that episode was she takes the guy's Funko. Yeah, and she's like, "Well, I cut corners just like you did." And she goes, "All right, I guess I'll have to come clean." And she, she she's like. That's not what I did. Oh, yeah, that is that's exactly what I did all. Because she goes, we're samesies, Mom. She goes, that's not what I did. We are not samesies. And she thinks, oh, she goes, oh my God, we're totally samesies. Yeah. And and that's when she goes to come clean. But, of course, freaking Bennett. Yep. Snitches on her beforehand until she gets fired. So she gets to have this, like, epic Jerry Maguire, like, I quit scene mm-hmm. and like it's it's topped off by JJ being like well mom I know it sucks that you got cans and all but uh, if it makes you feel any better I stole a bunch of car keys from the office including yeah. Bennett's dad <laughs> goes, this one belongs to Bennett's dad she goes you know that actually does make me feel better and then also to our whole thing about the running gag it's paying off we had the whole running gag of the of the haunted house. Yeah. Yeah, she so like she went to a goth dad subreddit and she was able to pay she was able to get somebody to buy it. Which, yep. which you know, like as much as I cringed over the influencer thing with Monica B, I do think that th- that this show better than most modern like laugh track comedies actually handles modern references pretty well. Like that makes sense within the context of jokes. Well, I mean, yeah, like the whole paper straw v metal straw thing, mm-hmm. and the Etsy joke, and the, the use of the subreddit, uh, you know, shit like that. Um, mm-hmm. And of course, Which... and, and catfishing, like you know, catfishing using their celebrity dad's Twitter. Yeah, which, by the way, the whole thing about the haunted house. Leads to the episode that we were referencing. Yeah, where uh, basically Cassie and Sho uh, go on this uh, like wrestling cruise, like one day wrestling cruise, um, and it's their anniversary. And usually Cassie's the one that goes all out and plans everything. 
and like you know show show is kind of just forced to just sit back and watch but this time he wants to help out he wants to be the one to step up uh and like you know like if, if anyone if anyone's been in a relationship before usually when women say they don't want something that's when they want something and so she's like no i don't need anything big for this anniversary it's fine Show like a normal logical man is like okay. That clearly means she wants something big. Uh, so, yeah, so he's taking this wrestling gig thing, mm-hmm. and, and like he, you know, we get to see a lot of old school classic wrestlers, um, like his buddies and Mick Mick Fole- Mick Foley, Mark Henry, Rashiki. Yeah. It was so cool seeing. It was so cool seeing a Mark Henry, and I will, like, um, especially like again, it's paying off an earlier joke. Uh, like they mentioned uh, like that he used to braid McFoley's hair all the time. And we get to see McFoley, and he's got braids. Mm-hmm. So that was pretty hilarious. Um, and yeah, so like they uh, like he even like ha- hires like a ba- like an acapella group to serenade her with uh, Backstreet Boys. I want it that way. But she's so busy selling the haunted house that she doesn't really have time for any of the activities. Like, his boys end up eating this really nice, like, seafood tower that he got for her and everything. But in the end, like, Sho and his wrestling buddies, like, you know, put on a show for her, and they sing uh, I want it that way for her. And it's, it's really cute. It's really, really cute. These massive ass men singing a classic nineties boy band song. It was great. Yep. Uh, but yeah. Even though they aren't like professional singers. But they actually but they still did pretty well. I mean they're professional entertainers, so they were still able to rock it. Um but yeah, so I guess that transitions into the star of the show, the show himself. Uh big show. Let's talk about it. Um, I really liked his arc. Again, it's very simple. You know, he's trying to find a purpose after retirement. And, you know, at first, he's like, maybe I could do something with Cassie. And he tries the whole real estate thing. And he ends up raking everything around him. Um, Which, that was so funny. <laughs> right? And he's like, they're like, all right. Cassie's like, yeah, I have a very special job for you. Okay? Yeah, Yeah, she puts him on muffin duty and then, like, a fan is like really excited to talk to him about stuff, and he's like, "Okay, this is my chance to impress him." And she, he tells all the stuff that she's not, he's not supposed to tell about the house, and it's just like, "Yeah, I'm gonna go." Yeah, but he still grabs a muffin. Yep. Uh, but yeah, so so then he's really down, and then like Terry decides for charity, um, to hold like a kind of like that that thing in Spider Man. Where like you know you last around in the ring with the big show you get like a, a like a year a year free membership to the gym or whatever, and so like he has this whole little uh, mini circuit of like doing matches again and it really reignites his love for wrestling and he realizes you know maybe I'm not done yet I thought I was done I thought that I thought I was good I closed the book on that chapter in my life but maybe I'm not quite finished with it yet. Um, and so he thinks about like getting back into it again, and then of course that causes a lot of tension with his family, especially with Cassie with her new business and Lola, who upended her life because she thought she would finally get to spend time with her dad. Which, which by the way, I love the way that they like did that with the fact that he just openly announced it without consulting them or anything. Yeah, and then and then when he goes like. Hey guys, guys! It's like you want to go. Get, you want to go get some ice cream, and then JJ's like, "Read the room, bro." Like, come on. Yep. It's just like, ah, oh, man. Uh, but yeah, we already talked about it. But like, real quick, I really enjoyed the "It's a Wonderful Life" episode that they did. Um, you know, with the, Terry, and he's like dressed in all white. Yep, and I, I love that he goes. You know, I I use I usually um. I'm usually naked in my dreams. He goes, well, thankfully for the both of us, especially me, you were dressed. Yes. And then also the fact that they go to 
they go to the dream Minnesota to show where she is. <laughs> yep, and it's still cold. And he's like, somehow, even though this is a dream, it's still cold. Yep. I, I really enjoyed that. Um, also, we didn't, t- we, we barely touched on it with, um, with Lola's arc, but I, I did like that, like, uh, you know, just to show how great of a dad Big Show is, he went out of his way um, on Lola's birthday to inv- uh, get her best friend from Minnesota to come come mm-hmm. by because she was still on homesick. I thought that was really sweet. That was a nice gesture. Um, it shows. Just, yes, it was. He, it shows just how I like much he how cares. How genuine he is. Yeah, like you know, he's not the smartest guy, but he he genuinely cares, and he always means well, even when he's doing like the cringy dumb shit. You can't help but just be like, oh, he's trying, man. Like the whole Greg Turbo episode, which that is a really cool name. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, when, mm-hmm. when he ends up like <laughs> accidentally dating his daughter's boyfriend because he's like a massive uh, Big Show fanboy, and um, he, he's forced to break up with Greg. <laughs> and I and I love how they explain that too because he was like, I was so worried about you dating and so worried that you'd break home. A bad boy that when you brought on such a good guy, I got too enamored with it and too ran away with it. Yeah, and plus he was a fan. And come on, he is charming. How can, can, can you really blame me? <laughs> she's, and she's, she's like, you guys were doing, you guys were gonna go apple picking. Like, who does that? It's like, well, it was apple season. Oh man, it was like I, that. That was really good. Uh, and again, uh, like. The cook-off episode with Lola. Like, I like that, like, even though Lola's technically the main character, like, all the kids have really good moments with the show. Um, mm-hmm. Like... And and I also like the fact that, uh, that even though, of course, he, he's a, he's a big guy and uh, needs a lot of, like, calorie intake when you're that big, they don't do too many like fat jokes, but they do manage to bring in food and make him a chef. Yeah, I thought that was pretty. I mean, that, and that makes a lot of sense because you know, especially with wrestling, where you have to constantly maintain like a weight, you have to have a very specific diet. And and I love that where uh, they were late, where uh, she goes to Cassie is like. Up late at night thinking, and she goes into the kitchen, and he's there. Yep. And he's like, "Yeah, I was up late stewing my thoughts, and then I realized that I actually wanted stew." Yeah, I thought that was I thought that was pretty funny. Um, also, he makes like this Scooby Doo style sandwich that's called, he called a dad sandwich, and it looks delicious. And it was like fifteen. No, twenty two parts. Yeah, twenty two pieces. That's why I said it's like a like a Scooby Doo sandwich. If you ever watch like yeah. old school Scooby Doo and see the sandwiches that Scooby and Shaggy make, that was legit the yeah. sandwich he made. And Lola shocks him, and he's like, "Can you help me pick up the pieces of my sandwich?" It should at least be. It should. It should at least be twenty two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, which I, which I thought that was great. Um. And I like the whole speaking about food and like his stuff with his daughters. I like the whole episode about the subplot about the what led to the cook off, which was yeah, the whole with the recipe uh, it, because like they came up with this special thing when uh, when uh, Lola him uh, when Lola was a kid because it was one, their one thing that they used to bond the the couple times they got to see each other back in the day. I thought that was, mm-hmm. I thought that was really sweet. And, like, you know, he didn't want to change the recipe because he wanted to preserve the memory of that special time, you know? Like, again, he's super genuine. And even so, even when the cringy shit happens, you can't help but just be like, oh, come on. Yeah. And one of the moments that was, that was sweet, but also funny was at the end of the episode where uh, they're like, okay, to make up for a fight and all that, we'll go get. We'll make you something, and then he comes in the room, and he's holding Chinese, and he's like, "Yeah, with the cook off and all, we kind of ran out of food, so we just got Chinese. yeah, we just got Chinese." <laughs> Thought that was great. Um, and also, I like how at the cook off, the dessert portion where they had finally made up and everything, and they didn't have anything left, so they just put 
Girl Scout cookies. And everyone yeah. said Yeah, what? Lola still wanted to send and shows like, they came from the same box. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, that, was, that was great. Uh, but yeah, all in all, this was a great show, man. It's it's nice, light, and fluffy. Nothing super serious. Nothing groundbreaking. But again, this is just a nice little comfort food, bite-sized show that I think, uh, you know, mm-hmm. people will really enjoy. And if you got kids, definitely watch this with your kids. This is definitely like a, a for-the-family affair type of show. Um, and I, I think it's really sweet. And it's not overly cringy like how some episodes of Fuller House, you know, were... I, I think this has a nice balance. I, I really enjoy it. And also, one other thing, just real quick, is um, I like how they make like little references here and there, especially to the fact that they're on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Like, like JJ makes a reference to F- Frankie and Gracie. Yeah, Grace and Frankie, and she's like, you know, uh, you know, uh, every everybody everybody loves Tomlin, but like, you know, don't sleep on Fonda. Um, yep. And then, like I like we said earlier, uh, Tam from Queer Eye shows up. Uh, you know, so like another Netflix crossover. The Queer Eye boys show are showing up everywhere. They were on Big Mouth. Um, they're also on uh, another Netflix show that I can't remember. Um, and, and now they showed up on this. Like they're really good. They're really going. They're really like having fun being the Netflix poster children. Um, Indeed. Which, uh, but yeah, so, uh, any closing thoughts on the big show show? Uh, just really good, fun, like, fluffy type show that was really good and I really like and, um, I can't wait to see more of. Yeah, hon- um, honestly, I, uh, like, you know, we, we covered this out of necessity because we were out. But now I genuinely am looking forward to hopefully being able to cover part two uh, when it drops. Yeah, and uh, I know typically we do speculation, but with a show yeah, like this, it, it, it's not. It doesn't really warrant it. Like there, there's nothing uh, to really theorize. Like, although I will say that one thing that I, that I would want to see is possibly a love interest for Terry, and or a separate non-family friend for the mom who isn't evil. Yeah, I, w- I would like that. I would also, um, you know, maybe at some point, like, like for a, maybe like a Christmas special, like for the holiday, like Lola's mom gets to come and, you know, we get to see that interaction. Yeah, because we haven't seen her. Yeah, we've only saw a text message, uh, like that one text message in the beginning. So I would like to see uh, Lola's mom at some point. Um uh, but yeah, a great show. A solid pick, Brian. Solid pick. Thanks. I was just looking through. I was saw a Netflix, and they said this show, and then I was like, "What the hell is that?" And so I googled it, and then I saw a trailer, and I'm like, "Hey, that looks pretty decent." Hey Jay, why don't we try this? And he's like, "Okay, we'll give it the three episode rule. If we watch three episodes." Yeah, it'll be cool. And so I marathoned it real quick, and I was like, yeah, I really like it. And Jay's like, yeah, it's pretty good. And then as he started to watch it, he more and more <laughs> Yeah, and it. I was just like, okay, yeah, no, I really like this show. And I ended up, I believe I finished it before you. Um, uh, yeah, so, like, yeah, it was, it was one of those shows that, like, it really grew on me pretty quickly. Uh, it was a great, it's a great show. Really enjoyed it. Um, so, Same. yeah. Now uh, we've come to that special time of the night where uh, we are going to tell you guys uh, what is coming up, going on, and what has happened on our individual channels, both uh, Vlair and YouTube for Brian, uh, just Vlair for me. Links in the description down below. Also, if you want to do, uh, if you want to send us feedback and uh, you know just tell us how we're doing, give us any of your opinions on any of these shows that we've talked about. You can reach us at channeltasterspodcast at gmail.com. Uh, if we ever get any feedback, uh, we would be glad to read them on air. Um, and also, uh, don't forget to leave us a rating uh, if you're listening to us through Apple Podcasts, because that's the best way for more people to actually find our podcast and you know grow the audience. So yeah, Brian, what, is, what have you done this week and what is coming up for you uh, this coming week? Well, honestly, uh, this week I didn't do much beyond uh, 
the fin- the finale for Nancy Drew and the premiere for In the Dark. Um, hopefully by the end of the weekend I can get out a late, another late review of Harley Quinn on Blair. Great episode. Um, fantastic. Uh, I, the, the, the cat portrayal is real solid. Nice. And, uh, then, uh, Monday, I think, uh, Roswell's coming on, but I, I'm, I'm dude, honestly, so I'm I'm so behind and I'm just like, you know what? I might just do a season overview <laughs> cuz like it uh, it just keeps stacking up more and more. Yeah, cuz I'm keep... already two episodes behind. Same. So, same. So, yeah, I might just do the same thing. Yeah, because um, also we don't know if this has like this has a full season anyway because of, you know, the virus. Yes, but also um this Legends isn't back this week, is it? I don't, I don't think so. But don't quote me on that one. Well, well, I know, uh, I know, Supergirl and all isn't. Uh, it comes back a week from. Yeah, I think all, I think all the Arrowverse stuff comes back at the same time. Um, I want to say so. I think it's next week. Uh, so, no legends. And then, um, Wednesday is. Uh, Freaking Riverdale, which I don't cover anymore, thank God, because last episode was... <laughs> yeah, honestly, about that, that episode almost broke me. Um, but it definitely solidified that I'm not I'm not covering next season, but... Uh... Oh, hey! At least, according to IMDb, uh, Legends is coming back this week. Oh, it is? Cool. Uh, we'll, we'll double-check that, but cool. With... With the episode titled Zari Not Zari. Nice. Uh, and this one looks interesting. Um, then, but also, uh, Nancy Drew's done for the season because of the pandemic. Yep. Um, Thursday is uh, Katie Keene, which I need to catch up on. I'm yeah, I'm uh, I I forgot that it came back last week, so I got I gotta watch that episode as well. Same, um, because we we clicked on for in the dark, and we were both like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh snap, that's a whole episode. I don't remember seeing this episode. This is definitely new. Yep. Um, I- and apparently it ends on a big thing for Jorge. And for and some revelations for Pepper as well, so hmm, interesting. Interesting. Um I hadn't heard that yet. But um Well at the part I came in, like something was revealed about Pepper. Um Interesting, because Pepper is definitely an underrated character. She's the most mysterious. I think that's why I like her. Also um, you know, I'll, I'll tell I'll, t- I'll tell you I'll tell you uh, off off camera like what it was, but it's pretty hilarious because it involves a character that I, uh, it inv- the character that like shows up is named Hannah, and I've always equated her because it's the Lucy Hale show. I've equated her to the Hannah of the group, so I just thought it was funny that like the character from her past is named Hannah. It shows up, uh, but yeah, uh, interesting. But but yeah, and then Friday is Harley Quinn again, which hopefully I can finally do at a more, uh, more uh, timely fashion. Yeah, and then Sunday we go back to our regularly scheduled deeper type, darker content. Yeah, for- so Saturday we are doing. Nancy Drew, uh, as Brian said, Nancy Drew ended this past week, and boy, what a season it was. Um, I'm glad we had this little light, fluffy palate cleanser of a show, because we're about to get into some very deep and spooky stuff, uh, so definitely look forward to that. Watch Nancy Drew when it drops on Netflix, y'all. You will not regret it. Uh, it is, no, it's going to be one hell of a binge. So please, if you trust our taste in TV at all, watch Nancy Drew 
when it drops on Netflix. So you can, you know, join in on the discussion for Nancy Drew season one next week on Channel Chasers. Uh, as mm. far as, oh, go ahead, Brian. I was just going to say, uh, you see Nancy Drew, and I know that it has some diehard fans, but some people think Nancy Drew and don't think too much, but this show gets very dramatic and very spooky. And also, it avoids all... You know the CW has a very specific connotation, which I hate, because everyone assumes that every show on the CW has to follow like the stereotypical CW stuff, this show completely swerves all of it. And I mean all of it. I mean, I won't even say it, but they did like something that was kind of like almost a milestone for TV. Especially the for... Finale. Espe- and then they did something they did something that's super rare in not only just the CW, but YA TV shows in general. They have resolved relationships, people have broken up, remained friends, and there's no underlying feelings of a, oh, am I going to get back with this person? No, we're just cool now. We're just cool. It's fine. So, yeah, it's it, it swerved a lot of the bullshit that the CW is known for, and that I hate. That Like, I have to defend this network so much. I am so mm-hmm. glad... I am so glad that there is a show that I can point to to be like, this show doesn't do any of that bullshit. So, yeah. shout out. Yeah. Um, I have a hard enough time convincing my my parents to watch anything on the CW. But luckily, they're fans of Supernatural, so I got that little bit of the wedge open in the door. Right, okay. Yep, uh, so, yeah. So that's what we're doing on Channel Chasers. But as for me... Uh, I, if you have been keeping up with my Blur content lately, uh, because I have had barely any shows, I've been getting really into a seasonal anime. Um, but in terms of actual, like, regular American TV that I've been doing, uh, I've got One Day at a Time, which I will continue to do on time on Tuesdays. So, unfortunately, I will have to skip Legends for a few weeks, um, because, uh, well... One day at a time only has a few more episodes left before they have their mandate or they have their break where they had to stop production because of you know what. Uh, because, you know, this does go on YouTube and saying that word tends to, you know, not make videos do well. So, yeah, you know what happened. So they stopped production. So they only have a few more episodes left. This show, I'm so glad Pop TV saved it. And somehow it's even better. Like, they stepped up their game. It's funnier. It's snappier. It's uh, it's just so much better. I don't, I don't know what it is, but it's, it is better somehow. And it's just fantastic. So happy it's saved. Uh, so happy I get to cover it on a weekly basis. Uh, love one day at a time. But in terms of the anime that I'm covering, I am, I'm doing Tower of God, uh, season one. I am doing My Next Life as a Villainous. I just did a review of episode three that went up earlier today. Uh, I did do the second episode of Kaguya-sama Love is War because I forgot that it started last week. So I'm doing episode, I did a review of episode two for Kaguya-sama Love is War season two. And uh, I'm probably doing a couple more animes because, again, uh, I'm running low on regular American TV because production got shut down on a lot of shows because of, you know, you know what? Mm-hmm. I'm just I'm just gonna treat it like it's Voldemort and just not say its name. Oh, um, one one show that I that I watch, uh, slight plug here, uh, the acronym for what the fuck is wrong with you? Uh, they they refer to it as human malware. Yeah. So yeah, human malware happened, and so that shut down all the production of the shows. So I'll, I'll be covering a lot more anime now, and I'll be doing more like experimental, not experimental content, but more like um, discussion video type stuff. Like I'm gonna do some writing videos, maybe like uh, how I'd write some characters. Tw- you know, Twitter has been asking me about that. I'm gonna start that eventually. Um, gonna do those. Gonna you know to try and try and mess with some stuff that I haven't done yet on the channel uh, since I don't really have that much TV to cover anymore. Uh, at least not until, like, May. So I got I got time to kill. 
but yeah, thank you guys for joining us for uh, this episode of Channel Chasers. Hopefully the audio will properly save. Fingers crossed. Uh, but until next time, hopefully we'll catch you guys next week for our Nancy Drew episode. All right. Peace. See you guys.